Hello there and welcome to BNETTV.com. I'm Michelle Sklar. We're here at the CTIA Wireless 2008 show. We are on the show floor this afternoon and we are speaking with Omar Javed of Qualcomm's Media Flow Technologies. Thanks for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate it. Absolutely. For our audience members that are tuning in for the first time, give us a brief overview of Media Flow Technologies. Okay. So basically, you know, Qualcomm historically, we're a technology company, so uh, Media Flow Technologies is the technology arm of the media flow effort. So what I mean by that specifically is we have a group, essentially we develop all of the technologies for this end-to-end -end system and the first deployment of that commercially has been in the U.S. through our wholly owned subsidiary called Media Flow USA and now the focus of the group uh, has shifted to try to get media flow deployments outside of the United States. So really the, you know, the, there's two core missions for media flow technologies. One is the development and the ongoing development of the, tech, of the media flow technology and then also in terms of business development uh, getting commercial deployments based on media flow right. outside of the United right. States. Okay. So um, just to put things in perspective for our audience, uh -huh. Media Flow USA is the, the, the content side, if you will. Correct. And what you're doing is creating the technologies for the delivery of that type of content. Correct. Okay. So let's get into a little bit about, I guess, the, the formats used in order to optimally deliver content. Uh -huh. So, you know, today we, we use a variety of industry standard formats. So as an example, uh, that we, we for video we support H.264 today. Uh, and the reason, I mean, the rationale behind that is very straightforward because for the content producers, we're not trying to make it, we're trying to make it easy for them uh, so, uh, so that they don't have to do, they don't have to invest a tremendous amount of money or do a lot to repurpose the content for the mobile space. We're actually taking their li linear feeds that they provide to cable and, cable and satellite TV providers today, which is all H.264 based. So, you know, for them, it's, it's we're another distribution platform. Right. And, you know, again, and, and it's not that I'm trying to sort of mix between the, the, the two different companies, but I'm sort of looking, one is the example of how what you've created has been delivered, if you will. Sure. That's sort of why I'm referring to Media Flow USA, of course. if you will. Yeah, but, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we are now moving into um, a situation where it is becoming far more commonplace for people to want to have access to seeing video on their mobile device. But we're still struggling over mm -hmm. the quality. Mm -hmm. So what kinds of things are you doing within your technologies to, I guess, better perpetuate quality yeah. delivery, if you will? Well, that's a great question. So. You know, from the, it, historically, we started out as actually a research and development project within Qualcomm. And from the very, very beginning, we tried to create a very high quality experience. And to be specific about what high quality means is, you know, when you're talking about mobile TV, the mobile part of it is actually less important from a user experience standpoint than television. So whether you're talking about somebody who's very tech savvy or whether somebody who's the average Joe, so to speak, TV means certain things. So, right. you know, you have to have good quality, good video quality, first and foremost. The other thing is, uh, you have to have channel changing times which are similar to television. So, from the very beginning, we tried to make a very high quality video experience, a very high quality channel changing experience. So, we have channel changing times of about 10 seconds, or sorry, two seconds. Right. So, uh, how do I change the channel on my mobile device then? What do you mean by that? So, when you press a button, and you, when you press a button to change a channel, the channel you get another, you get the next channel very rapidly, right? I know it sounds like, well, you know, that's self-evident. <laughs> but if you if you actually look at it, competing technologies, they have channel changing times about anywhere from six to ten seconds. Right. And it doesn't sound like a big deal, you know, conceptually. But when you actually see it in in practice, right. it's it's a very jarring experience. I mean, imagine if you will, if you were sitting home at television and you press the channel and you press the button to change a channel, it took you ten seconds. Right. And in fact, this is not a this is not a, a thought exercise. They actually have done you know when they were doing studies around high definition television. This was actually a, a issue, an issue in the early days. And what they found is, uh, after two seconds, you lose 50 percent of your audience if it takes too much time. It's interesting you should say that because what I was going to sort of point out, as far as you know, it should be self evident. But why did I ask that question? Because people, how they use their mobile device is for on the go, yes. um, snacking on bikes and pieces of information, I'm standing in line, I'm, I'm waiting for the bus, I'm right. on my lunch break, I mean, how my, my time as it relates to how I'm using my mobile device right. is completely different to my time how it is when I watch television. Correct. I, I, I agree. I, 
I agree with you, and I think you know if you if you have a user experience which doesn't support that, and in fact is sort of antithetical to that, it's not going to be successful, right? I mean, you have to. We're a technology company, but the thing is, we're, when we're talking about TV, it's mass market, and you have to think with the consumer, the end user, the consumer in mind. And if it's not something that is that is a good user experience, or more to the point, if it's a poor user experience, you're just going to limit your adoption tremendously. Right. And the you know, Omar, um, one of the things I've been talking briefly with uh, with various companies throughout the show so far, yesterday some of the pre-CTIH uh, sessions, if you will, um, one of the, the topics of conversation is how do we know for sure that consumers are really getting what what we want them to get or what they what they want to get more, more importantly. And right. so we're having these conversations on the, the mobile market, mobile advertising, and things. And that's only part of it because part of a consumer's ability to get what they want mm -hmm. comes through the delivery of that information. And, and so, sort of going back to where your role is in the market, yes. that's where you are is in the delivery and things. So, what kind of momentum are you guys experiencing right now? Well, you know, we, there's a lot of interest. I think the the uh, mobile TV industry as a whole has gone through the has gone through you know the the classic Gartner hype curve where there was a lot of hype and then you know now it's sort of uh, what I think Gartner calls it the trough of di trough of disillusionment right. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So we're in that we're in a little bit of that, but I think you know things are the gr the great thing is that the companies that we've been talking to that are interested in this they remain interested and remain committed. These are you know it's not it's non-trivial to build a mobile television network in any country, let alone the co a country the size of the United States. So it, it's a, it's a long-term commitment. So the good thing is that the partners that we've been talking to, really none of them have gotten cold feet. Uh, they still remain committed. I think right. the, I think the, you know, the, the, what, what the market has graduated beyond is really just this, you know, in a way this silly battle over acronyms and really, and really focus and, re and the focus, there's a renewed focus on making a great customer experience right. and and you know all the things that really are important to making this a success you, value etc do, do you think that your ability to focus because you are about the support of the technologies is I don't want to say easier because that just sounds you know superficial if you will but you're not you, your, your company or your are not in the position of creating the content where there's no. a, you're constantly being affected by the twists and turns of what's popular versus what's not popular. Right. But when you are on the, the technology providing end of things, kind of keeping your nose in the ground, doesn't matter what the flavor of the month is, someone's always going to want to make sure that's delivered the best way possible. So are you finding that your ability to kind of keep focus and build that momentum is kind of built into being on that side of the technology, if you will? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, put another way, what you're what, what you're really talking about is, so, you know, content comes and goes, you know, some shows, they wax and wane in popularity, but the underlying, you know, what, what needs to happen is you have to have the underlying technology and the underlying, underlying platform has right. to be sound. Uh, but I think they're interrelated, of course, because ultimately for mobile TV or for any television to be successful, it's all content is king. Right? right, so you can have great technology, you can have great infrastructure, but if your if your value proposition on the technology and the channels uh, it's poor, it's just not going to take off. Right. right, right. So we do, you know, we do we do what we can, but as you point out, I mean, as a it, we we really play an enablement piece in terms of trying to make the best in class technology, right. uh, and then trying to work with the ecosystem to try to get it so that you know the price points and scale and all of those things are achieved. But you know we're not a we're not a content company. We don't have those any of those type of people floating right, around. Right, right. Uh, but you know what we can try to do is, to the extent that we can, or in the areas that we play, to try to make it as successful or as painless as, as possible right. as it is for them. Omar, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. We've been here with Omar Javid of uh, Qualcomm's Media Flow Technologies. We're here on the show floor at CTIA, and I'm Michelle Sklar with BNETTV.com.